Hi, thanks for joining me again for another episode of Nature Experiments. My name is Tamara Beal and I work at Grafton Lake State Park as an environmental educator. And I'm excited today to be doing a little bit with some oil, some water, some antacids. Um, basically today we are going to be creating a homemade lava lamp. And so for this lava lamp, you need a couple different things. You need some oil, doesn't matter what kind, whether it's vegetable oil, canola oil, olive oil. Um, you need water. You need a clear bottle or glass. I've got a few different ones here that we're gonna use. Um, and then you need an antacid. That can be Alka-Seltzer, it can be non-brand, name brand, doesn't really matter. And then the last thing you need is food coloring. You can pick your favorite color, whichever that might be. And so to do this experiment, we need to first put some water in a jar. Now just a little bit of water is fine. Um, just enough to basically cover the bottom. That's all you need. And then you're gonna fill up a lot of oil. So getting a good big canister like this is good um, if you wanna do it a couple different times. That or you can use a smaller glass. Good amount in there. All right, so then we have to put our food coloring. So with these nature experiments, um, I get to do different explanations of things that um, occur uh, both in nature sometimes as well as in the classroom here and um, explain in this case why oil and water don't mix. So it's a little difficult to see, but on the bottom is a completely a layer of water and all of this is oil. So there's a clear liquid here that's all water and this yellowish liquid, all oil, not mixing at all. We'll find out why after we do the experiment. So I'm thinking that I might wanna use the color green. So I'm gonna put a bunch of drops of green. So I'm actually gonna bring this right up close and you'll see how the green drops just go straight through the oil. So this is food coloring, it is water-based, which means it does not mix with oil, but it does mix with water. So, not usually what you think of with food coloring is having these drops. But those are gonna sink all the way to the bottom and just basically look like a bunch of beads down there. Um, and so once you have that done, you can see that that food coloring went through and it's still just looking pretty much yellow um, where the oil is. So that did not mix with the oil at all. So the last ingredient to make our homemade lava lamp is antacid tablets. So like I said, it can be Alka-Seltzer, it can be non-name brand. And all you're gonna do is break off a little piece. You don't need the whole tablet. Break off a little piece and drop it in wait for the reaction. I'll bring you up nice and close. And if you want, you can drop in another tablet just for extra fun. And so we're getting this really cool reaction um, between the water and the antacid tablet. And this will continue until the tablet completely runs out. And if you don't want it to run out, well, you just keep adding a little bit more. Now you can't hear it um, like I can, but I can hear this like fizzing noise. So what is happening here? How are we getting this really cool homemade lava lamp? And so what we have is two different substances. We have oil and we have water. 
Oil and water, as you saw, do not mix. But why? Well, they don't mix because they are what is considered polar and nonpolar, or hydrophobic and hydrophilic. So phobic, you can think of the word phobia, um, almost as if it's fearing something. And then philic is the opposite. It's like it likes something. So water is hydrophilic. It likes water. Oil is hydrophobic. It repels or does not bond with water. The reason that is, is because of the shape of water versus the shape of oil when it comes to the chemical compound. So water, which most people probably know, H2O, is partially positive and partially negative at its poles. So you have one oxygen bonded to two hydrogens. So the hydrogens are partially positive and the oxygen is partially negative. They do not share these what are called electrons equally, they share them unequally, which creates a polar compound, partially positive, partially negative. You can think of it as if you had a can of soda and you tipped it slightly to one side, you would see a lot of that soda go this way and not as much soda at this end. So it's partially positive versus partially negative. Versus oil, in comparison, is not partially positive, partially negative, because it does share those electrons equally. And therefore, it does not have any charge, so it is not attracted like a magnet would be. Um, when we think of a magnet, we think of opposite charges attract. Positives and negatives attract each other. But oil does not have that charge and therefore is not attracted um, to water. So again, I'll do this and we'll watch as the blue this time uh, food coloring goes through the oil. Again, the food coloring is water-based. So just like the water and oil are not attracted to each other, the blue food coloring and the oil will not be attracted to each other. You can watch as those drops just drip, drip, drip down. Whereas if I were to drip, were, if I were to put this in water, it would instantly start to combine with the water. Um, because again, this is water based, it is polar, um, versus when you drop it in oil, it just wants to go straight through. There is no attraction process or attraction between these two uh, compounds. All right, so then what is happening with our antacid tablets? So antacid tablets um, are made up of both acids and base compounds. And when it reacts with the water, it creates carbon dioxide. So remember I said there is that fizzing. Um, so that fizzing is that carbon dioxide being brought up and being released into the air. So the carbon dioxide, um, to understand what is happening, we have to talk about density. So density is how compact a compound is. So another, re another reason why we have this makeup, not only are, is water and oil not mixing, but the water is all on the bottom, which means that it is more dense than oil. As in comparison, um, if oil was more dense, it would then be on the bottom. But when you drop in an antacid tablet, like Alka-Seltzer, it creates carbon dioxide gas. So gas is a lot lighter than water or oil, so it wants to rise to the surface through this solution. And so as it rises to the surface, when it gets there, it is released into the atmosphere, and therefore anything that's attached to that carbon dioxide molecule will then not be lighter than the oil. So in this case, when I drop this in, it combines with the water, uh, some water molecules as that carbon dioxide is rising. And so as the carbon dioxide rises, dragging those water molecules with it, it then releases the carbon dioxide, but then the water is heavier than the oil, so then it sinks back down.
And this process will continue where the carbon dioxide is being created by the reaction between the antacid tablet and the water, rising up by the lighter than oil, lighter than water gas, carbon dioxide, until that carbon dioxide is released. And then the water dyed blue by the food coloring drops back down. And again and again it happens um, until all of the antacid tablet is dissolved, until all the carbon dioxide is released. So again, I'm able to hear that reaction, which is pretty cool. So like I said, it doesn't matter what container you do this in, whether it's a plastic water bottle, whether it's glass, um, or whether it is a champagne or wine glass, um, all of this will create this beautiful reaction and you can do whatever color you want to do. Um, and this reaction also helps us to understand why we don't allow swimming in one of our ponds, Shaver Pond. So you can swim in most parts of the park. Um, but we do not allow swimming in Shaver Pond any time of the year in any part of the pond. Why? Well, we have things on our skin. Um, we have oils, we have hair products we use, we have perfume we use, just all these different oils on our skin um, that might be natural or added to our hair and skin. And all of that comes off when you go swimming. So as you can see here, with the oil and water not mixing, it's the same thing that happens in Shaver Pond. And Shaver Pond has been set aside as a particularly um, important pond that we're trying to keep for ecological purposes as pure as possible. And there are also a lot of marshes around Shaver Pond that help to purify the water there. So we do ask that you do not swim in Shaver Pond. You can choose any of the other ponds to swim at your own risk. Um, but that one specifically has been set aside for those purposes. Um, but to finish up today's experiment, we'll do it one more time. And this time we'll do it in a nice glass. So again, you're going to take some water. And you're going to pour it in. Just a little bit of water will do. And then you'll take oil. And then we'll let that settle a little bit. And hopefully with this one, you'll be able to see it pretty well. So I'll put it up nice and close. You might be able to tell the, the bottom is pretty clear. That is all the water. And then up here is all the oil. So all the water being more dense sinks to the bottom. All the oil being less dense sits on top of the water. These two compounds being polar and nonpolar, um, meaning that the water un unevenly shares its electrons. It's partially positive and partially negative. And the oil being nonpolar, which means it has no charge. Something with no charge and with a charge is not going to attract each other. Um, it needs to have a positive charge and a negative charge to attract each other, just like a magnet. And we're going to put a couple drops this time of red into our um, glass here, our fancy, fancy glass. And I'm going to try to spread out those drops to give them an even distribution. Personally, this is my favorite example of this experiment. And the last thing we need is an antacid tablet. So this time, just for effect, I'm going to add little bits of the entire tablet. And so as the tablet reacts with the water, it sticks to the water, creates carbon dioxide. As it releases that carbon dioxide, 
that water is too heavy again and drops back down to the bottom versus the really light, really uh, low density carbon dioxide that gives off and creates our beautiful homemade lava lamp. So I hope you're able to do this experiment at home. Um, it's a really cool, really easy experiment. And I hope you enjoyed today's nature experiments. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And we hope to see you next time.